from peace in the Atlantic. He says, rank-and-file Republicans are giving vent to their disappointment and frustration. And with or without Trump, their insurrectionary mood seems unlikely to change. Rank-and-file Republicans have signaled their disaffection from their party in spectacular fashion. From the Tea Party to the summer of Trump, the reason of the Republican revolt is not hard to explain. Disappointment and frustration. Donald Trump was propelled in the first place among Republicans in July 2015, much more by anger against the party's existing leadership than by any attraction he exerted on his own. I don't agree with that. I agree partly with that, but that's not the point. Listen for a minute to conservative radio host Mark Levin on the six-day Trump-Fox feud after the first presidential candidate's debate. And he quotes me as saying the following. Senator Mitch McConnell and Representative John Boehner and Karl Rove and their ilk, you're sick of them. You're sick of them not doing what you elected them to do. You're sick of them lying to you. You're sick of them attacking everybody who doesn't agree with them through their surrogates. You're sick of how they treat people who dare to challenge them in Republican primaries. You're tired of so-called conservative commentators on TV and elsewhere who serve as their surrogates. You don't feel you have a home, and you don't feel that there's a party that stands up for you. Levin expressed with extra vehemence a view that is surprisingly widespread among rank-and-file Republicans. And it didn't start in 2015 either. The influential conservative-leaning election analyst Sean Trend observed after House Majority Leader Eric Cantor lost a primary election in 2014 as follows, quote, Analysts need to understand that the Republican base is furious with the Republican establishment, especially over the Bush years. From the point of view of conservatives I've spoken with, the early to mid-2000s looked like this. Voters gave Republicans control of Congress and the presidency for the longest stretch since the 1920s. And what do Republicans show for it? Temporary tax cuts, no child left behind, the Medicare prescription drug benefit, a new cabinet department, increased federal spending, TARP, repeated attempts at immigration reform. Basically, despite a historic opportunity to shrink government, almost everything that the GOP establishment achieved during that time moved the needle leftward on domestic policy. And so, whatever happens to the Trump candidacy writes from almost certainly nothing good he says the insurrectionary mood inside the republican party will not easily be quieted more than 40 percent of republicans want illegal immigrants deported the party's best funded candidates are committed to some kind of pathway to citizenship more than a fifth of republicans believe the wealthy wield too much political power the forces that have worked to render the gop a minority party remain at work contempt for Ted Cruz, for Trump, and frankly, for guys like Rand Paul, among others. This is contempt for you. Everybody knows Bush isn't going to shake up anything. Everybody knows Kasich is a big government Republican, and on and on and on. And we want something else. I can't read all of this uh, David Frum piece, nor do I wish to, but let me, let me read the ending. He says, after the Fox debate, I received an email from an old friend who advises one of the Republican Party's very largest donors. And he quotes him this way, This is the first time I've ever done anything but throw cold water on this idea, but I think the Republican Party ought to split. The establishment's utter failure to even consider what Trump's rise means, much less how the Republican Party must accommodate Trump's supporters rather than the other way around, means a split. And a good thing, too. I've never voted anything other than straight-ticket Republican in my life, nor ever considered doing so. But I didn't think I'd be happy to cast one for Trump as a protest vote. But I wanted to say to my friend, this is uh, from now, you and your boss are the Republican establishment, or at least two of its most very important members. If we've reached the point where even the establishment hates the establishment, <laughs> the mood is dangerous indeed. Now, ladies and gentlemen, despite a lot of the static from some of the others in media and so forth, from day one I've been explaining how McConnell and Boehner are dragging down the Republican Party and attempting to destroy the conservative movement. And I don't need to bang my uh, pots and pans or blow horns or play clips. You know I'm right. You people have been listening, many of you, for a long time. Some have said just elect more Republicans and then we'll pressure them and then they'll do the right thing. That's wrong. Others, most, have sat silently while we duke it out in these primaries, and I bring candidates on to try and help you make a difference. 
And now they sit back and they say, see, I've been telling you all along about the Republicans or the Republicans aren't effective. Or, Yeah, we know. Thanks. Thanks a lot. During this period of time, I've put forward three different books, Ameritopia, The Liberty Amendments, and Plunder and Deceit. Ameritopia, which is political philosophy for really anybody, to try and get into concisely the bases for our republic so we can appreciate it even more. And the basis for tyranny, which is actually easier to explain, so we could resist it more. The Liberty Amendments was a personal search at first. Some people came up to me and said, what do you think about a convention of states? And I said, no, no, we'd have a runaway convention and so forth. They said, please study this. Will you please look at it? And I studied it. And I studied it. And I studied it. And I said, I need to write about this. Because they were right and I was wrong. And I think I've become the most prominent, well-known advocate of a convention of states with our friends Meckler and Ferris and Coburn and Professor Nadelson, as a matter of fact, and Professor Barnett, and there are others. And so we lay the case out there. And then, of course, we'll plunder and deceit. Well, I don't need to discuss that. You already know what's in there. You might say that the public and scholarly, perhaps even intellectual effort to drive the Republican back Party back into conservative arms has been led right here. Every day behind this microphone and in every book I've written in order to try and restore what's left of this republic. This is why you and I are held in such great contempt by everybody in Washington. And they better be careful. They're playing with dynamite. They're playing with your future. They're playing with your liberty. They're playing with your lifestyle. They're playing with your welfare. And they're doing enormous damage. And they're doing enormous damage to future generations. I'm the one trying to figure out recourses that are constitutional and civil. And yet, people like Obama keep lighting fuses and the Republicans keep stepping all over us. It is remarkable, question 83, that has not been addressed anywhere in the media but behind this microphone. Do you prefer a presidential candidate who has government experience inside Washington or no government experience in Washington. And you prefer 90% no Washington government experience. 90%. And these people inside the Beltway, these people who live inside the Beltway, the politicians inside the Beltway, the mouthpieces in the media for the politicians inside the Beltway, they try to drive the national agenda. They do drive the national agenda. And you have said enough is enough. So when they attack a Trump... Maybe it would have been somebody else if Trump hadn't stepped up. When they attack a Cruz, maybe it would have been somebody else if Cruz hadn't stepped up. So forth and so on. Ernie Grabowski, whomever it is, you're saying that horse, I don't have to agree with the horse in every respect. I don't have to like the horse in every respect. It doesn't matter. I know what I don't want. And I know what I don't like. And I've had enough of it. And so I'll make it clear to our friend Mr. Garrity and the others. We want our liberty back. I'm not talking about iPhones and popcorn at the movies and so forth. We want our health care back. We want our culture back. We want our border back. We want our military back. Most of all, we want our Constitution back. Can I be clearer? So join us. The critics who attack us because they say we're not conservative enough. This is a joke. This is a pathetic joke. Join us. Support us. Do you support the Liberty Amendments? You don't have to support everyone. Do you support the effort? No, they don't. Join us in nominating a real conservative. When Ted Cruz stepped up in October 2013, led a filibuster to defund Obamacare, he was brutally attacked by the people who now are concerned that Trump isn't conservative enough. When they told us to elect them, to give them the damn Congress, and we handed it to them. The first time they spent like drunken Marxists. They drove up the debt more than any Congress prior to this Congress. And let us be clear, that day of reckoning is coming in September too. When the Republicans give Obama everything he wants. Oh, they'll do a fan dance. Oh, they'll pretend otherwise. But they will give him everything he wants, as they always do. And then they say, give us the presidency. Well, we don't want to give him a Bush. We don't want to give them a Kasich. We don't want to give them a Christie. We don't want to give them a whatever. And then they say, no, you give us who we insist on, 
You give us who we demand. And we're telling them to stick it. The establishment is destroying the Republican Party. In truth, it already has. What comes of this battle now will determine whether the Republican Party is something effective or goes the way of the Whig Party. Now, the one time we were able to take back the Republican Party was Ronald Reagan. Two massive landslides. One of the greatest, most successful presidents in all of American history. And they tell us, forget about Reagan. We need another Bush. Forget about Reagan. We need Romney. Forget about Reagan. We need McCain. No, they're wrong. And we will stand our ground.